Buying a new construction home is laden with dangers. In fact, I'd argue that the dangers of new construction are much greater than resales. The rules and the processes are very different here. So just thinking that you're going to somehow wing it because you're smarter, you pay attention to details more, or maybe you're a better negotiator than everyone else could be a huge mistake. Because I've seen firsthand the consequences of mismanagement of a new construction purchase, this video is aimed at helping you to avoid some of these mistakes when buying a new construction home. Now these aren't listed in any particular order, so be sure to stick around to the end of this video as some later mistakes may be more crucial to your purchase than some earlier points depending on your situation, especially when you've got hundreds of thousands of dollars at stake. First, let's address the timeline for the purchase of a new home. Sometimes you may not get to have a timeline. The builder does. Often new construction homes take six months to over a year, well over a year sometimes, to complete and the builder's contracts give them plenty of flexibility. Now I'm not trying to villainize the builders here. They've got supply issues, they've got labor issues, all kinds of issues to contend with which are often completely out of their control. But you do need to be aware of this. Thinking that that nice lady in the office is going to use her sway to get your home pushed to the front of the line could be a huge mistake. These builders may be dealing with hundreds or thousands of customers all at one time and they all want their home completed and they want to complete it today just like you do. I'm Chuck Shaver and I'm a local realtor here in a local new construction community. Now before we get to some important questions that you need to be asking, if you're finding value here, take a quick second to hit that like button as one small way to support this channel. There are some important questions that you should ask when considering this lengthy timeline. Not asking questions like if the builder is permitted to raise the price during the building process can be a huge mistake. I've seen this happen with a buyer recently and it wasn't until the buyer started consulting with her attorney that the builder backed off. She ended up moving into her home with around $55,000 worth of equity which is pretty sweet. Another question you should be asking is what guarantees are included in the timeline? What deadlines in the building process can I count on? Not asking questions like these could be a huge mistake. If you've got questions that I haven't answered or if you're thinking about purchasing a new home anywhere here in Central Florida, either leave those questions in the comments section below or simply pick up the phone and call me. Myself or someone on my team with experience in this area of new construction will be happy to help. Another mistake I've seen new construction buyers make is that they don't attend all of their walkthroughs. Now I once had to implore a buyer to attend his walkthroughs and at the end of the day he was glad he did. Builders count on contractors to do good work and they often do just that. However, contractors are like every other trade and they sometimes struggle with quality control. Have you ever had a boss that was watching the quality of your work? Well, although it was many years ago, I have and I can tell you that my performance improved when he was watching me. It's for this reason that you need to not only attend the walkthroughs that the builders offer, but they need to know that you're watching. Settling for the minimum walkthroughs a builder offers can be a huge mistake and buyers can often obtain additional walkthroughs by simply asking. I recently closed on a new construction home where they completely missed some major upgrades during the process. It was only discovered because my customer was on them like white on rice. Had my customer not been doing this additional walkthrough, he could have been forced to endure yet another delay as the builder corrected the error. Perhaps you're a worrier. I surely am when I've got an investment like a new home being built. Maybe you're more optimistic than me. I mean, I get it. The builder wants to sell a home and you want to buy it. The lender wants to lend the money and you want to borrow it. So everything will just work itself out, right? Well, wrong. It just doesn't always work out that way. Interest rates fluctuate and even a very small change in your interest rate can have a huge impact on your monthly payment. Now, I know that your builder told you that they plan to finish by, you know, X date. But like I noted before, they don't always have control over everything. Things change. Although I'm aware of lender products out there that can lock in rates even several months, six, eight months out, Ignoring the fact that you may not be able to or want to afford this home a year into the future could be a huge mistake. Before you get too far into this process, play around with an online amortization calculator. Take note of how significantly a mortgage payment is altered by just a half a percent change. So how do you deal with setting up all this financing? Well first, you need to compare lenders. The builder's lenders sometimes offer superior loan products. You may be able to take this product to a local lender that you trust and they might be able to match or even beat the builder's lender product. My son, for instance, well, he recently bought a home and he used the builder's lender. While he paid for that decision, well, we both paid for that decision with massive headaches, 
with this national lender. A local lender that I trust immensely was unable to match the builder's lender's offer. Not considering the worst case scenario with fluctuating interest rates could be a devastating mistake and it can cost you thousands of dollars. Speaking of financing, you need to ask the builder what happens if the appraisal doesn't come in at value. If your financing doesn't have an appraisal contingency and you don't have the cash to make up the difference, well, there could be a huge problem. Be sure to ask what it would cost to buy down the interest rates if they do rise. Be sure to ask your lender how far out you'll be able to lock in an interest rate. While nobody knows for certain what tomorrow's interest rates will be, most lenders and realtors have at least an idea of the trends which could have an impact on when you lock in your interest rate. Now before I address one of the greatest mistakes buyers often make, take a second and hit that subscribe button and click that little notification bell. That way you'll be notified whenever I post other videos just like this. Here in Florida, realtors are paid by sellers and that includes the builders of new construction. Nobody, including builders, would want to spend that money if they don't need to. However, if you're trying to manage an investment like the purchase of a new home, winging it is a dangerous proposition. Not using a full-time and experienced realtor to help you negotiate and manage this process on your behalf could be the single greatest mistake you could make. The new construction process is quite different than that of a resale, and a realtor's role is also quite different too. Realtors are typically unable to negotiate quite like we can with the resale, but perhaps they can still get you that washer or dryer or a free upgrade. The bigger issue to me, however, is having an advocate on your side to help you with the process, especially when things do get ugly because they often do. One mistake buyers sometimes make is going to the home site without their realtor from the very beginning. Often builders won't allow you to add your realtor to the contract if you didn't bring them with you the very first time. Buyers might think that they'll get a discount if they don't use a realtor, but that's just not the case. If a builder can save a few thousand bucks, they'll do it, and I can't say I blame them a bit. After all, why do they want someone involved that might make their job more difficult by encouraging the buyer of their product to make additional demands or ask tough questions. Now some believe that you don't need a home inspection. They believe that everything is brand new, so what can go wrong? Well, several years ago I worked with this very sharp veteran and he was very frugal. We negotiated a great deal for him and he was resistant to having his home inspected because he didn't think it was necessary. He reasoned that the highly regarded national builder had great reviews and he had some building experience too, so it wasn't going to be an issue for him. Fortunately, he eventually relented to my request and he had a home inspection. Now things were going along quite smoothly and he felt like he'd wasted his money for a bit, frankly, for the first two inspections, and I was feeling his angst too. Then, at the final inspection, the inspector went into the attic and found some wire that was tightly strung across the attic from end to end, stretching over one of the trusses. When the inspector touched this wire, it was actually hot. Now mind you, the buyer nor myself ever went into the attic, nor were we invited. However, that home inspector quickly earned his money that day. The builder was apologetic and he was quick to make that repair, but that experience has been forever etched on my mind. Neither the buyer nor I suspected any ill will, and that buyer is still happy in his home today all these years later, as that builder really did a great job on the home. I've never had any personal flagrant examples of builders trying to make any inappropriate shortcuts, but I've heard of things like this happening. Let me know in the comment section down below if you've experienced a builder behaving badly. Doing so helps others just like you, as well as this entire community. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.